So making some authentic Mexican food using cast iron cookware seems like a great idea. So today I'm going to make some simple, authentic tacos. But authentic, what do I know about making authentic Mexican food? I'm not Mexican. What I think I need is a Mexican chef. Hey, hola, Jed. Escuché que necesitamos ayuda. I'm Jed, this is Co-Culture, this is my friend Chef Luis. So as you would probably assume, Chef Luis is the Mexican chef that's going to help me today make some authentic tacos using cast iron. Welcome Chef Luis. Muchas gracias. So we're going to get into making two different types of tacos and Chef Luis is going to tell us what we're going to be doing. Yes, so today we're going to be making mushroom stuffing tacos and the other one is a very traditional dish from uh, North Park, Mexico. Uh, one of my favorite that I used, my grandma used to make a lot. It's called uh, colache. So colache is made with uh, pumpkins or specifically zucchinis that we just harvest from the, the field. And then it was a uh, very traditional dish made by the farmers to get them uh, working after they, they were harvesting the, all the pumpkins. Right. I just harvested them from Whole Foods, so hopefully those <laughs> will be okay. <laughs> Uh, it is uh, March in Vancouver. Um, so what's the, the, the first one that you said we're going to be doing, the mushroom one, what's that, what's that called? What's yes. That, what's so, that called in, sorry, in Spanish? So in Spanish it's just uh, hongos. Yeah. Uh, traditionally we use a herb called emasote for uh, that recipe. It's kind of tricky to get it here in Canada. Okay. So we're going to avoid it a little bit. You can substitute if you want with a little bit of margarine. Okay. Margarine. Margarine, yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very traditional recipe from Mexico City. Okay. So it, it, they use it a lot for stuffing their facilities. Okay. So how are we going to go about doing this? We're going to start making the toppings? Like if I'm going to tackle making tacos for my family, how do you suggest that we start? So yes, so we can make the toppings, we can set them on the side, and then we do fresh tortillas from scratch. Okay. I'm going to show you guys how to do And we can actually make a really good grilled salsa as well. Oh. Okay, so what are we going to start with? So we're going to start, I think, with the salsa. Okay. That's great. Okay, we're gonna move on to salsa. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna start by charring the tomatoes, garlic, and jalapenos. So we want the cast iron pot to be medium high heat. And you're gonna just keep them there with a little bit of oil till um, they get completely charred. So charring the vegetables will bring all those nice smoky flavors from it. Jalapeno actually tastes better once you grill it or char it, you get those nice flavors out of it. So tomatoes are almost done. You see they have a really nice black char. So we want them to cook them a little longer because the softer they are, the easier they are to, um, to smash. So if you're gonna use a blender, you can blend them right away. Uh, because I'm gonna do it by hand on a motor, like I want them to soften them a little bit. So we got already the garlic and we are the jalapeno ready. We're just gonna add a little bit of salt. So salt would help us with the grinding. There you go. Oh, it smells just very nice. So this is like a chunky salsa, so you want you to get all those nice flavors out. So you see the paste now. We're adding the tomatoes. So you need to be careful with the tomatoes. We're gonna be adding one by one because they're gonna throw juice when you start squishing them. So they need to be done slowly. There you go. Now the other one. So I use one jalapeno. You guys can use two, three, or four, depending on your tolerance and spice. I always recommend adding one by one because you never know how spicy they're gonna be. So I'm gonna add just some black pepper. So 
for V1. This sauce had to last a little bit longer. You can always add a little splash of white vinegar. That will make it last for uh, one or two weeks in the fridge. Here you go. Okay, so uh, that salsa looks amazing and smells amazing. So uh, what's the next step? What are we doing here? So we're making colache. So that's uh, that's a zucchini stew that is very endemic from my state. Okay. Uh, we eat it a lot um, over actually the fields where they grow the zucchinis. Yeah. So they use a disc. A disc is uh, one of the actually discs they use for when they are working out the, the earth. Mm -hmm. The ground, like just just in the ground, like yes. putting them in the ground. Up. So yeah. those those big discs they yeah. use for yeah. them for those things. They yeah. uh, the old ones they actually they, they use for cooking it, and that's where they cook all the stuff. No, so you like you cook in the disc. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So we call this thing called discadas. Yeah. That it's very from northern Mexico, and like like we cook on those things. So we put charcoal, and then we put disc on top of the charcoal, and yeah. then we use it as a wok. Amazing. Yeah. So cool. you don't get nothing more organic than that because yeah. literally they're like just taking the zucchinis from the ground and the tomatoes from the other field and yeah. then they cook it over. Right there. Yes. Yeah, and garlic, I guess. Exactly. Right? Everything yeah. gets garlic and cilantro. Okay, so we've got onion, tomato, zucchini, garlic, right? Cilantro is what's going into this. Country. Exactly. Salt, pepper, and a little bit of oil. That's it. Okay, and then that's going to be cooked in the fry pan. Exactly. Okay, so you probably got so far that I'm making Mexican food but he's actually cooking it. So this is going really well so far. We're gonna add first the garlic and the onions. It's very important that you hear that sizzling when you're cooking. That means your food is getting seared. If you stop hearing that sizzling, that means your pan was not hot enough and your food is gonna start boiling. Okay, so our onions and garlic, they're caramelized. So we try to make them as transparent as we can without burning them because we don't want that bitter aftertaste of the burn. And we're gonna add now the zucchini. So we hear still sizzling. So it's very, very important not to throw a lot of product on the pot because you don't want it actually to stop hearing that sizzling as I say. So you don't need to move it a lot. You can just put it on the side and leave it over there. Doesn't need a lot of supervision because uh, we're using moderately heat. So they're be cooking for about five to six minutes. If you see, they have a little bit of color. That's what we want. We don't want to cook them a lot because we want texture in this too. So pan seal sizzling. We're gonna add the tomatoes. We're gonna cook them for another four or five minutes. We're gonna add salt and pepper to this and it's done. Okay, so I'm gonna add some cilantro. We're barely gonna rough chop it. So if you don't like cilantro, you can avoid this, but we use a lot of cilantro for our food in Mexico. So this will go in the pan to bring a lot of flavor. We're adding some salt and pepper, that's it. So pretty much today, we're just using salt and pepper for cooking everything. We're not adding any other seasoning. If you can have fresh ground black pepper, it will be better. It has more flavor than the actually stuff they buy that's already ground. There you go, our collage is done. So we're just gonna keep this on the side to keep it warm. And you can serve it right away or you can keep it in a warm place where you make your fresh tortillas. 
Okay, so we're gonna make the hongos. So pretty much uh, we got white mushrooms, we got some nice garlic and onions as well. You can add jalapeno peppers to this if you want. We're gonna add a little bit just to give more flavor. Salt, pepper, same cilantro to finish. This is a very common stew in Mexico City streets and it's, they, it's always used to stuff the um, quesadillas in the street. So our pan is hot now. We're gonna be putting some oil. There you go. Perfect. Very nice sizzling. You don't want to move stuff around too much, so you just want to caramelize it nicely. Get some of those nice flavors out on the oil, and then we're gonna start adding the mushroom. Yeah, it smells very nice. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some jalapeno, I'm gonna dice it. The reason I'm adding the jalapeno at the end is because if you add it at the beginning when the oil is hot, it's gonna start smoking a lot and you're gonna cough and it's not gonna be comfortable. So after you add the mushrooms, you can add the jalapeno on top and that will not make it that hard on you. Adding some fresh cilantro. Just gonna roughly chop it as well. Stems and everything. So when you cook, you can use the stems because they cook down and they don't feel as bitter. When you're making like fresh salsa, I don't use the stems because like when you buy them, they can get a little bit bitter. Cilantro. Salt and pepper. So mushrooms, they need a little bit more salt. You can smell the freshness of the cilantro. And here you go, that's our mushroom stew. Okay, so we're gonna make tortillas from scratch. So right now we got masa, so it's pretty much ground corn. Um, Mexican masa, it's made of corn that it's been uh, cooked on limestone. So limestone actually peels the corn and it keeps more minerals and protein content to actually the, um, the corn. So it peels itself and it shows just the core of the corn. Then we dry it and grind it down. And that's why masa flour is so, so fine compared to cornmeal. So you can get here in Canada, different brands and uh, different uh, masa flowers. Uh, you can get blue corn, you can get yellow corn, and you can get white corn. So right now we're using, I think it's yellow corn. Yep, golden corn flour. So we're gonna, we do a free pouring. So pretty much, we use the same amount of masa and the same amount of water. It depends on the humidity and the Okay, so we're gonna just gonna add water to it. So we're gonna work it a little bit. It's gonna start getting all that water in. So once you get your masa dough, you can actually keep it in the fridge up to four days on a Ziploc bag. It can get a little bit dry, so you can just need to hydrate it a little bit and you can continue using it. So you want to have like a really nice kind of like Play-Doh texture that it's soft, but it's not sticky. So it doesn't stick to your hands, but it's easy to handle. So we got our mouse over here. 
if you see a texture, it's actually pretty soft. So our cast iron pan needs to be hot. Like we're not putting oil, we're not putting anything. Like it's so a natural Teflon would help us actually cook it. So uh, this is um, medium high heat. Number six, it's been pretty, uh, it's already hot. So you want to be able to put your hand on top and feel the heat. So we have a tortilla press. This is the most traditional tortilla press you will, you will get. So we're gonna use parchment paper for it. Put the parchment paper over there. You're gonna grab your masa dough. Really nice little bowl, kind of like a size of a golf ball. Put it right in the middle. You're gonna press it down. So you don't need to go crazy with it. You just need to put enough pressure so it goes down. Gonna flip it. I'm gonna do it again. So you want the tortilla to feel thin. You're gonna take it out of paper. I'm gonna put it right into the cast iron. So we're gonna give it, depending on how hot it is, we're gonna give it between 30 and 40 seconds and then we're gonna flip it. So once you can actually move it around, you can flip it. So you're just gonna, this side. So we're, we're just gonna finish from the other side, then we're gonna flip it again and we're gonna, like we need a dry cloth, and we're gonna press it gently. So when the tortillas start actually um, bumping, it's gonna start inflating itself. That means it's ready. Okay, so we're gonna flip it. This is the last step, and then we're gonna press it. So it has to inflate like a little pillow. There you go. There you go, perfect, see? Boom. So if you see the difference, this one is a little bit thicker. So it didn't inflate as well as this one. So you need to make sure your tortilla is nice and thin when you put it in the stove. So when you're making tortillas, the, the side that puffs on the bottom is the one you're gonna actually use when you make your tacos. So tortillas, they have two sides. So if you see the tortilla, so the thin layer on top, when you do the tacos, it goes on top. So that way you have two layers holding the food. It doesn't break down that easy. There you go. Okay, so we're just gonna do the avocado for the tacos. So it's just gonna be smashed avocado, nothing crazy. Very nice avocado. So, taking the pit out. Super creamy. So I'm gonna put the meat in the bowl. I really don't like adding lime to when you're making guacamole because it tends to take a lot of the flavor out and it just takes limey. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt, black pepper. We're just gonna work with that a little bit. So this is really, really natural. This will bring creaminess to your taco and it will actually give flavor to it. So when avocados are completely mature, it's really, really easy to just smash them. There you go. So we're gonna be using a cashew-based cheddar for finishing our mushroom tacos. It actually crumbles really, really easy. So we don't need a lot. It's just for adding a little bit more texture and flavor at the end. Same as the avocado. We're just gonna break it down a little bit. There you go. Perfect, no, so now we got all our setup ready for our taco party over here. So we're just gonna warm up the tortillas a little bit. So cast iron is like number two. 
just to warm them up a little bit. You see they become soft. They're very easy to use. And here you go. So as I say before, tortillas has two sides. So when you fold them, there's like a little, like kind of like, I don't know how to call it, but um, it makes kind of like a paper, kind of thin plate that goes up. So you grab for the mushroom tacos, we're gonna have mushrooms. Like a really good amount of it. You have some avocado on top. And you're gonna finish with some cheese. There you go. Then we follow with the other taco. We're gonna add some really nice salsa to it. Here you go. Okay, so Chef Luis has made this amazing taco meal, and I really don't think I'm quite qualified to <laughs> tell you if this is authentic or not. So enter Alec. You may remember Alec from a previous video. He is our e-commerce manager. He is from Mexico City. And he is going to be the one that's going to tell us, did this meet the grade? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm so, getting nervous. <laughs> so here we go. I like this job. <laughs> Pass a test. <laughs> Nail it. <laughs> this is the real deal. Mm. So is that like a street vendor when you go out for lunch when you're in Mexico City? Absolutely. I'd say even better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay, so there we have it. Um, amazing taco meal. I really didn't do anything except film this. We utilized you know, three different cast iron pans that did the entire cooking. Uh, you know, the result that we got, all medium heat. Chef Luis is, is really quite particular about medium heat and lower for everything that was cooked. And, you know, the results show for themselves. Nothing is charred, nothing is burnt, nothing is gushy. All of the, the, the uh, mushrooms and all of the other uh, chopped veg have a lot of texture still to them, which is really exciting. I'm really excited to dig into this. So thank you, Chef Luis, for being here. This was a, a ton of fun. And until next time, thanks so much. Perfect, no, I'm glad. All right, thanks, any questions, throw them below. Thanks so much. Have a good one. <laughs>